Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex, that's in red, this is the Ramble, that's in yellow, and we're here in New York City. We go until midnight tonight. Hey, look who's over there. Hey, babe. That's Lori hey, Thompson. <laughs> nice to be here. Lovely to see you. Uh, I'm so that, glad to that, have that, you back. Uh, we told, said this last week, but so good to have you back, you know. Oh, Bennett, uh, exactly. I feel, I look forward to it so I much. I kept stalling your, I think we did three of them at once last time. I stalled all of them and parceled them out over the month so I wouldn't, uh, you know, run out <laughs> yeah, of well, it. Yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah. Oh, my. But you're going to go on a five, you should hold us a five-month tour. So that means at one time we'll have to sit here and do 20 of them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> We're up for it, we, though. We should We're probably do an extra one every time leading up to that, so that we, you know. Yeah. Well, let me know so I can have my moving uh, clothes. You know, my my clothes yeah, roll. You, you change your your. You know, they don't remember from week to week. I yeah, but if you're watching them side by side, I don't know who would. I see that, the but. background I have here is my daytime background. Because yeah, I used neat. to use the nighttime background, and it didn't work because you're sitting out there in the sunlight and enjoying yourself. And in whatever. sunny flaw. It's actually getting warm again, so we can do things from Adirondack Beach. So does my face that. have color in it? It does. Really? It does. And so that means, you know, what is it? You need to use sunscreen because I got a little bit of, I use like 50 all the time. Yeah. And uh, yet I like the look of the tan, but well, it's down like, there, <laughs> down there in Rio de Janeiro, where you were, you get, you get a lot of color on you, right? You do. Yeah. And we took two bike rides. You know, what's a real treat is Uruguay. Uruguay yeah. was fantastic. I didn't know. And it's like, oh, and by the way, we're stopping. She, she married a guy who loves to travel <laughs> and he's retired, right? He is. So he can, you know. We could go, and he's planned for it well, unlike his former radio announcer wife. Um, luckily, but, luckily, you found somebody who's going to take care of little Lori. That's right. Sometimes she needs taken but care I saw, of. But you sent me a picture of yourselves at um, Eva Perone's grave, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, you look like a happy couple. We are. I would say we are. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not, nobody's perfect. It took me a while to get used to But you to that. did look like tourists in that picture. I know. I'm <laughs> pointing to, to uh, Ava Perrone's. But the other cautionary. And he's wearing uh, shorts, you know. Uh huh. Right. But a bit of advice if you go to the Rigoletto Cemetery, where she is uh, not buried, it's mausoleums, don't look for Ava Perrone, look for Duarte. Ava Duarte, she is buried in her family, not buried, she is in her family. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's so cool because people, you know, she championed the right well, to vote you for remember, women. You, what, here's a little trivia question for you about our career together. Okay. Did we ever go to a grave site together? Yes, we did. Yes. We went to the, in that, uh, the place south of San Francisco. Colma. Uh, Colma and- Which has and more dead people in its population than live people, because it's yeah. nothing but one cemetery after another. And we sang, Wyatt Earp, was it? Well, because it was Wyatt Earp's grave. He's yeah, buried yeah. in Colma, California, in San Francisco. And yeah. um, uh, he is buried next to his wife. So, you know, they if, you, if anybody ever went and saw the movie Tombstone, you know about his wife. She was a performer and so on. Well, they. They got married, and uh -huh. uh, they went. I I read a whole book about her. They went to uh, Alaska, and they started running a, a hotel and bar, and I think it was also a gambling joint. And um, they lived up there for a while, and then they moved no. down to Hollywood, where he became an advisor 
to films, to silent, you know, to uh, silent uh, westerns. Yeah. Uh, he and he was good friends with Tom Mix and people like that, you know, and uh, Hoot Gibson and all those silent uh, stars of of cowboy movies. And if you look at those early cowboy movies, those silent films, yeah. they're dead accurate because. It, the people they used in them were people who had been involved in the Old West, like Tombstone and so on, because that was only yeah. a few years earlier. You know, that was like in the late 1800s. Yeah, so, so those they had films in their, in their, in their uh, portrayal of the Old West are dead accurate, and he was one of the consultants on it. And when he That's died, uh, 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 Tom Mix was there as one of his pallbearers, and I think Hoot Gibson, and all these old western stars because That's they knew cool. him and they loved him and uh yeah, yeah so um he i like that story yeah but what what was the point i was making oh yeah so wide up josephine was the wife's name she was right next to him and uh -huh. then there was a guy buried right next to her and i'm trying yeah. to figure out who he was you know uh, was it their child? The real estate dealer, you know. No, <laughs> he was he was somewhat the same age as her, and he had died, I think, a few years a few years later or a few years earlier. I don't know. I can't remember now. And I think what it was, I think, when once Wyatt died, this was probably the guy she took up with, and maybe or married a, married this guy, and so he was buried next to her. So the three of them are all buried in one. One uh, 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 plot. Uh, plot, yeah. So. Well, I, yeah, that was fun. That was part of your TV special. The worst which TV was a special. Blast. The worst TV special of all time. It was a blast to do, though. It was fun because, and I remember I had a polka dot, white with the red dots, uh, Marilyn Monroe top, because we had a clothing, um, we had a clothing incentive uh, with with American Rag, which had everything I loved. And we got to uh, choose our clothing from that, yeah. and I bought a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah well, I got that deal so that you could get clothing. Uh, yeah. Because when you're doing a TV show, you need clothing. So we yeah. had, we had American Rag supplied clothing to us. Yeah, yeah. and that was great. I appreciated that because that was my store, man. I yeah. loved it. But no, that TV special was the worst ever. And if you want to see it, uh, uh, I believe yeah, I think it's available on our uh, our. Uh, site on our uh, uh, what do you call it uh, Roku site a Roku channel oh, okay yeah. yeah and let us not forget though that you are Emmy winner well that's Alex. for something some other stuff right right that was that for the beta breakers beta breakers and then uh, a year later I won it for uh, what did I get it for I, oh, I got it for a show called log on TV Oh. Yeah, so that was the one I really liked because it wasn't, a, the first one was kind of a group Emmy, so we all got Emmys. Uh -huh. um, but the second one was one that I won legitimately for something I had done. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, well, I knew you always had your hands and fingers and appendages in the tech pie. In fact, um, I didn't realize how much, but you were really, you were right there with Silicon Valley and made friends, you were friends with a lot of those guys. And I'm going to find out more by reading Kara Swisher's burn book, which just came out. And so I'm looking, supposedly. What? What? what, what, what? Kara Swisher, you've heard of her? No. Yeah. Oh, she is like the journalist of Silicon Valley. Oh, and really? she has a new book coming out called Burn Book, which supposedly has a, a lot about the skeletons in the closet of Silicon Valley. Yeah. So I just bought it and I will, I will know more about it when we talk next. I doubt if but I'm in it, however. You might be, because I remember you used to have fun on weekends, you would go down to Fry's Electronics. Oh, where well, uh, <laughs> yeah, Fry's Electronics, which no longer exists. No. Was, Fry's was initially, believe it or not, folks, a supermarket. Was it? Yes. And then they It was a supermarket chain, as a matter of fact. But they started selling at the supermarket some electronics. And a few years later, Fry's just became an electronics store. Yeah. And it was the world's largest electronics store. Folks, if you think of a big, gigantic supermarket, and then they put an electronics store in it, that's the size of Fry's. 
And they kept yeah. building bigger and bigger places. They bought out a place up in Sacramento that was triple the size of the fries in, in uh, San Jose, right? Yeah, they had it going on in the, but, in the embryonic stages. Well, in the there. early days of computers and so on, this was like traveling to, Lour to Lourdes or wherever. <laughs> I don't know what, whatever the religious uh, uh, experience was in those days. But you would travel down there, and you you would walk through the place, and ooh ah, you could walk through it and come out of there a thousand dollars out. You would spend Easily. that much money, yeah. And then you just bought, they were just little gadgets you bought, you know. Uh huh. And it was like uh, everybody. It, it was probably a hookup place too, except there weren't as many women. I don't think it was a hookup place particularly. No, you wouldn't want to hook up with the guys who go to fries. Come on. <laughs> You know, yeah, pocket protectors for days. Yeah, right, right, exactly. It was like the Radio Shack crowd. But if they I, mean, had I would pocket. go down there at least once every three, four weeks. Yeah, I remember you that know, was And your... I didn't need anything. <laughs> no, just to look. I just wanted to see what was new. And then sometimes there was something new and I bought it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you had all the toys. You did but have you know the trouble with electronics, you buy electronics. And given five years, they're out of date. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not like they say, you know, we just built the best computer we can possibly build. Let's keep building this one for the next 10 years. <laughs> no. Right. No, they come out with a new one. It's more powerful, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, I bought a, <laughs> I have a thing here that I use now for my computer called a Apple Studio. Uh, yeah. A studio Pro, it's called, and uh, I bought it uh, about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And it's a wonderful machine, I love it, but it's already old. Really? You know, because yeah, the that's... newest ones have more. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, that's the so way. So when they I'm getting this their... money, I'm spending yeah. about six thousand dollars, and I'm just loading up one of these things with just the most memory, the most everything. But I just know that a year later, something better will come along. Right. And that's yeah. the trouble with the electronics stuff. You know, it's not like you buy something and, you know, you should be able to use it for a long time. But like Apple, to begin with, if, if you have something that's maybe about six years old, they don't start making the new operating system to work on it anymore. Mm -hmm. So yes. you can't download the old, you know, so... So all these things get really old fast. So I had a lot of junk in my apartment from fries by the time I was through <laughs> that I wasn't using anymore because it just, you know, it didn't, didn't, wasn't state of the art. Right. Now, fries should have had a donor program like Goodwill, you know, mm -hmm. you can donate your stuff and then people who weren't on that, uh, weren't on the same timeline as you could just, you know, have no. the old yeah. stuff. Well, hey, Apple, you know, what you should do, and it would give me great confidence when I buy stuff from you, is you should say, if we come up with something new, you can send us your old machine and we'll let you upgrade to a new one for this amount of money. That would be great. That would be clever marketing and great for the consumer. Well, because it, it, every time you turn around, every year, Apple feels compelled, compelled to come up with a absolutely new machine, mm -hmm. a new technology, or they add something. At first it's the M1 chip, and then it's the M2 chip, then it's the M3 chip, then it's the Ultra, then it's the ta da 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 Come on, every year there's a new upgrade. I know, it's just exhausting after a while. Like I bought Final Draft, you know, the screenwriting yeah. software, yeah. Ricky brought it for me. And uh, it's all it's out of date already. I didn't buy. I think I bought it two years ago. I bought it, it years ago, and the one that I have probably doesn't work anymore. I haven't used it in years. Yeah, it can it can work for your own purposes some, but yeah, it's fun to play around. Yeah, but I mean, but, it, but they upgrade it every year. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's what because uh, a friend of mine was talking about that very thing. You know, sometimes the upgrades on software aren't that expensive, like thirty nine bucks or something like yeah. that. But still, you got to upgrade it. But you, yeah. then you go, why am I upgrading this? Because I'm only using a certain features in it to begin with. I don't need all the new features they've added to it. Right. That yeah. is a package, though. Yeah. Like I have yeah. this program that uh, 
uh, it helps me make my website called Quick and Easy Web Builder, okay? Uh-huh. And uh, I bought it, every year I upgrade 39 bucks. And they've added all kinds of things to it. Every year there are 100 new improvements to it. And you're going, wow, yeah, it's worth 39 bucks. But wait a minute, I don't use any of those improvements. Mm -hmm. I only use this for this. And really the original one I bought should be the only one I really need because it worked. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's it's the that, problem. That's the problem. Uh, that's it. I think that they play to our fear that, you know, eventually this won't be any good at all. Or and that so, I'm out of date. Uh, you know, God forbid yeah. I should be out of date. <laughs> That's right, darn it. Yeah. You have a rep I, reputation to maintain. Yeah, I'm trying not to be out of date. Right, anyway. <laughs> oh. I don't care about being hip anymore. I figure you, you know, you're either cool innately or you're not. And then don't oh, try. I'm not hip anymore. I watch, you're we watch uh, at dinner. Uh, we put on TMZ. Mm -hmm. We watch TMZ. You ever see TMZ? Yeah. Yeah. I don't watch it religiously, but and I they see start it. doing stories about people, and she, Marjorie and I look at each other and go, "Who are they?" See, I don't know. The People magazine is getting the same. You know, it used to be someone instantly recognizable on the cover, and now it's like you know why they were instantly recognizable? Because you paid attention to that. Yes. As you exactly. get older, you know. I mean, can you tell me the title of uh, this? Is a good question for you. Okay. okay. Can you tell me the title of one song by Taylor Swift? Uh, is that one? We are never, never getting back together. But that's the only one. That's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. And that was from ages ago. Yeah, and they're probably yeah. There. yeah. I, yeah I don't Taylor even Swift. I don't even know that song. Yeah. Well, and she's of the pop stars that we have to choose from these days. She is. She's just pretty great. I mean, she's wholesome. I always, I always try to comb for some flaw in her pretense. Well, she's you know, a, she's her, a her really makeup. fairly decent person, and she's. Uh, but I bet she's lousy in the sack. I don't know, Travis Kelsey. Their romance blossomed when he no, made no, but her. Forget a about list. Travis Kelsey. He's the one who hasn't explored all the sexual things about Taylor, Taylor Swift yet to suddenly realize he isn't getting satisfied. Okay, uh, so, uh. <laughs> but all these other guys leave her, right? I know. And how old is she now? And she hasn't even come close to getting married. And uh, well, I, I think a she's too particular about guys, and I bet she like doesn't give good head. I don't know about that. She seems to have enough imagination for that. I don't know. About <laughs> Taylor. I know about Taylor's fellatio skills, but I think she's just working. She's married to her career. And she works, works, works all of the time. And I don't know, we'd have to have a, a blow off to find out how well, Yeah, but I mean, all I'm saying is I just tend to think that if she were really good at that, guys don't give that up that easily. <laughs> you know? It's you know what regular. I'm <laughs> Maybe. You may be on to you something. You know, because you break up with somebody and you go, I got to break up with this person. I, you know, they're just driving me crazy. But they do give great head. Mm, that's uh, like I think I'll stick around for another month. <laughs> <laughs> that balances the scales, yeah, right? Yeah, it does. Oh. It balances the scales. Yeah. yeah, well, there and people are going to annoy you. What I've learned is that I annoy myself some days. So expect my husband not to annoy me some days. It's kind of unrealistic. Oh, marriage is, uh, I, I said, somebody said, what, what, what is the key to a successful marriage? And I said, forgiveness. Yes, yes. You know, because you're going to have a lot of stuff to forgive as time uh -huh. goes on. And you know what? My chart of things that are, that need forgiving is very small now. You know, like things that bug you when you first move in with somebody, like they leave the cap off something. Or the little things. Don't You know, you've got to learn to just let those go before they even are, are you, uh, I, I accept all of Marjorie's nuttiness. And, uh -huh. and, and as she gets older, it gets worse because <laughs> as you get older, your problem, what you are, magnifies itself. Right. It's you, then it's you know? cast in amber. <laughs> I mean, uh, she's uh, obsessive compulsive, but I mean, only Ooh. minorly so when I first met her. But uh -huh. now, it's like 
the bed has to be made in exactly this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and those things I can deal with, but it's the way OCD controls people's thinking. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, I told Rick before we got married, I said, I will not be held hostage to your OCD. Meaning people will try to get you to do things a certain way, arguing that it's the most So has he pretty much honored that? Pardon? Has he no. pretty much honored I, that? Got to call him on it. Oh, all, the, all the time. Yeah. yeah, or just frequently. I mean, I don't have to do it anymore verbally. I can just go. So what is really? it about you that drives him crazy? <laughs> that I narrate Excuse me, thought. welcome to the first Alex Bennett psych uh, uh, <laughs> evaluation. Yeah, what? Well, because I, I tend to, because we're in radio and half the time when you're by yourself, you are rehearsing things and how you should best phrase them on the radio, or mm -hmm. I do that. Mm -hmm. I've done that all my life, though, before I was in radio. And sometimes he doesn't know whether I'm talking to him or whether I'm just talking to myself. And so that kind of bothers him. But uh, other than that, I you, think that... You talk to yourself. I talk to myself all the time. Yeah. And out, and he loud, doesn't, out loud. Yeah. And I get earworms and sing them all day. <laughs> you get what? <laughs> The earworms, you know, you'll get a stanza of a song in your head. Oh, I see. And, but I don't just sing it once. I sing it all day. Yeah. <laughs> Until someone gives me a new earworm, I'll say, okay, stop, give me a new one. And uh, then I'll I assume that. I assume he's been married before. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I guess I can count him on one hand. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was, like, really surprised that I was able to overcome that. But it, you know, it was like I don't want to be someone's number. But uh, it, it it sounds like you have a good relationship. We do, we do. I think it's because we determined. I determined since uh, I was going to be married for the first time, and I didn't want to be married any more times. Yeah. Um, that I was going to have to overcome a lot of the preconceived notions I had about what things meant. You know, like it's like track record, and and I yeah. said, you know, with a track record like that, how can I get involved in that? But over time, you see sides of a person that make you realize yeah. that the way you waited, you know, that multiple marriages yeah. is unfair. Yeah. So, so how long was his shortest marriage? Oh. I, he goes. He tends to go six years, um, and one of his wives passed away from yeah. cancer. Yeah, we don't carry that. I think the shortest was maybe four years. Mm -hmm. The longest was. So, are you counting up to that time? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Should I when I can make my flight? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, but I do worry sometimes that having never been married before that something, I might be in a mood someday, mm -hmm. and he'll say something, and I'll go, something will click in my head, that's it. So I have to be aware not to get there. Yeah, well, also, you know, the thing is that as you get older, you will tolerate a thing like a marriage much longer than you used to. Mm -hmm. you well, know? you know more about yourself at that point. I know that, you know, this is a woman I'm going to die with. <laughs> okay, plain and yeah. simple. I, I uh, ain't going anywhere. Where am I gonna go? <laughs> Come on, <I> Tinder. <laughs> Nothing below my waist works anymore. I had all those prostate operations, and they beat up on my oh, prostate. Oh, but, oh yeah, <laughs> my doctor went in there one day, felt it, and said, "Hmm, yeah, it's flat." And when it was like, what do they do? Do they take the air? Do those seeds take the air out of my prostate? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a Ziploc bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, so well, you know, I mean, but I, also, you know, we forgive a lot. And that's, yes. that's it. You know? Well, and isn't that a good quality to engender in oneself? It's a combination of forgiving and suddenly realizing where the hell am I going to go? Yeah. yeah, you know who's gonna want right. me? Nobody. Forget it. You know, this old carcass. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that I had a. You know, there were certain things that I regarded as standards 
and now I just realize it was pettiness on my part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's not that I have high standards; it's just that I'm yeah, petty. Well, just, uh, you, you're more accepting as you get yeah. older, you know. Right. Or you just get got pissed about everything, you know. Yeah. It was like I had this list of uh, what transgressions people could com- could commit, yeah. you know. And if they committed those, they're pretty much off the marriage list, you know. Yeah. Commit too many of those transgressions, and you're not even in contention with them. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're, it sounds like you're happy, and if you're happy, I'm happy. That's the old saying, right? That's good. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, your father said that. If you're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. Well, you have a great spouse too. I mean, it would it would be hard to be married to someone whose friends didn't like your spouse, but you have a wonderful spouse. So yeah, that yeah. I'm I'm fair, I'm pretty lucky. Yeah. Uh-huh. You both are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That we found each other at this point in our lives. You know, mm-hmm. terrific. Uh, yeah. See, that's that'll another show thing. what J Date will do for you. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's hey, like, listen. Uh, let's do this again next week. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Ladies and definitely. gentlemen, that's her nibs. <laughs> I don't know why I use that term. Uh, her nibs. <laughs> Lori Thompson. Thanks, Lori. Hey, my pleasure. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, Lori Thompson. Yay! Thanks, Lori. Wait a minute. I got them all tangled up in my earphones here. Hello, everybody. How are you? How you doing? How you, what's happening? How's it going? How's your nibs? Whatever. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, it's uh, Monday. It's Wednesday. <laughs> It's not Monday. It's Wednesday. I got my coffee, and I want to. I want to thank. I think it's Alan sent me this coffee, and mmm, it's Tim Hortons, and it's good. It's really good. I'm surprised. I, I figured, you know, what can you expect out of a place that was named after a what? A, was it a hockey player? I think Tim Horton was a hockey player. Uh, but uh, the coffee seems to be okay, so what the hell? Anyway, let's admit some people here, okay, who are joining our program. There they are coming in here. And uh, uh, there's, oh, there's Brian Neary and there's uh, Charlie Wallace. Hello, guys. How are you? You're the only two on our show tonight. It's Charlie's com- mad at you. Stop bashing Taylor Swift, his girlfriend. Is Charlie mad at me for that? Yeah, you keep bashing his girlfriend. Oh, he's not even listening. He yeah, can't he, even hear us right now. He's not. He's he not even connecting his audio. Oh, here it comes. Hey, Charlie. He's working on it. It's coming slowly but surely. It's coming. Um, let me see here. Uh, Alan is uh, coming here in a second. There he is. <clears throat> uh, hi, Alan. By the way, did you send me the Tim Hortons? I did. Yep, it's good coffee. I sent you, I sent you medium and medium strong. So there's two different strengths. Well, no, but you sent me the uh, you sent me the Colombian and the regular. Oh, okay, whatever. Yeah. I knew there were two different ones. So. And I got to tell you, the Colombian's really. That's all I've had so far. It's really good. Good. It's, it's a good. it's a decent coffee. I was amazed. I'm glad you enjoy it. Good. Yeah. Because usually, you know, what, what, you know, they got Starbucks and they got all kinds of different flavors in the K-Cups, you know. And I find that no matter what you make, they all taste alike, you know. And this tasted kind of, had kind of a nice little taste to it. Good. But let's I'm get it. Wait a minute. Now, what's he on the phone for? What? He's something at work. Now, the building is burning down. He's got to get out there. Um, They're setting up his wedding date. Uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah. Not listening to. Let's see if we can listen in on it. Oh. What was that? Wedding date. Hmm. What was what? that? What was that? No emergency, I hope. She called me from downstairs. <laughs> God, we're so lazy lately. Who called you from downstairs? Tiffany. Tiffany. Okay. Does, Ad- does Adrian have her own phone already? No, she had my old one, and she lost it. On the the cruise, so she doesn't get one until I get a new work phone, and she'll get my work phone. Oh, okay, 
right. I just got her a watch. It's not an iPhone watch, but it's like an imitation one. It's only like $35. Yeah. Well, that is an imitation. I'll tell you. At 30, yeah. At that yeah. Amount. So, yeah. but it tracks her, so I can track her. Because this is the, uh, the th this is the expensive one. This is the uh, $900 deal, which is now, I think, like 800 if you go online. Yeah. Uh, great. Best, the, a great <clears throat> uh, uh, Apple Watch. The best they ever made. You will find that they probably start making them all using the same power and so on. It's really good. Really good. So, uh, Charlie. Yes. I noticed you were saying that I was only kidding about Taylor Swift being lousy. Yeah, she's and very energetic in her videos. I think she'd be great be fit. No, she's exhausted after her videos and can't, you know. Now, I just think she's probably not great in a sack. I think that's why she can't keep a guy. No, she can't keep a guy because guys want women to be subservient, and she is a type a type alpha or whatever. Well, she's, she's not subservient because she's making her own money and everything. Exactly. You know? Guys don't like that. There are women in this world who don't have the talent she does and have to kind of act subservient to their man in order to get one, which I find disgusting because I never wanted a woman who was subservient I to me. I would be subservient to her. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I don't, I, you know, yes, I guess, if you say so. Yeah. Absolutely. So, anyway. Uh, anybody have any feelings about the... Uh, Primary? No surprises. no surprises. Super Super Tuesday. No. You know, it. You know, what's her name? Nikki Haley does bring up a good point. For all he's bragging about, this is the biggest rout ever in the history of of, uh, of uh, primaries and whatever. The fact is that in most states, he only got sixty percent of the vote. Yeah. You know, there's a whole forty percent that doesn't exactly think he's a good idea and, in fact, voted against him. He's got to now woe over or woo over, whatever the... He's got to try and get the people that voted for Nikki Haley now to vote for him. Yeah, yeah. And he won't get him. I don't think so. I, I think know those, get him. Yeah, No, I think those people just aren't going to go to the polls. They're not going to yeah. They're not going to vote this year. I you agree. Know, I, I was talking to Lloyd, Lloyd Thompson today, not in the one that we did today, that we played today, but when we were doing a whole bunch of them, banking them because she's going away for a month. And we were t I was talking about the fact that uh, her husband is, uh, is a Republican. And for good reason. He's a businessman. And if you're a businessman, it's probably in your best interest to be a Republican. Uh, but he doesn't like Trump, Okay. And I said, I feel sorry for that kind of Republican because they really have had their party hijacked from them, you know, to a kind of philosophy which, you know, if, if Trump doesn't win this election, which, of course, he's going to say was stolen from him, yeah. um, the Republicans who backed him are finished. They're absolutely finished. Except Phil Meyer. Well, I'm I'm talking about the people in Congress oh. and so on. You know? Yeah, politicians. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, why they are hitching their wagon to this guy is beyond me. You know, um, I think that you know there's a good chance Biden will win just simply because there are those people who don't like Trump. More so, I think think than didn't like him back four years ago. You know, so it, it but. Uh, I'm still worried about uh, Biden's uh, ability to get, uh, you know, get the votes because in a lot of these primaries, there was a good percentage of people who didn't, you know, said no, no candidate. You know, they what was the term they used for it? Um, undecided, undecided or non-committed. Mm. Okay, uh, but you could vote uncommitted was added up, and in most of these states where Biden was running, at least ten percent. We're uncommitted. Well, you know that. What, what's what's going to happen in the fall with those people? Are they going to vote for Biden in spite of everything? They might only because they don't want to see Trump become president. But you know, nevertheless, it's it's uh, it's not a big decisive win. And quite frankly, I don't think America wants either of these people. Right. That's the sad part about it. 
Um, they don't want Biden because of his age, and they don't want Trump because of he's Trump. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, and and you know, I don't know that the age thing. They've let the age thing become too much of a story, but people do get worried. This would be the oldest president ever. It is now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah he's already the oldest president. Yeah. Um, they beat their own record from the last four years ago. Yeah. I mean, there, were, there was a time in history where most people didn't live this long, you know? So, uh, but I mean, it, it's, it's um, uh, it, 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 a good question of, of what uh, what's going on here, you know? So... Anyway, it was not, and I just, I just, I hate these primaries. I just think they're stupid. Oh, here is a man who worked the polls yesterday. Yes, he's a lap dancer, ladies and gentlemen. He works the clubs, and uh, no, but he works the polls. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. You got the tits for it. Uh, <laughs> uh, what the... Uh, what was it like working the uh, voting places? Because you sent me a, 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 a thing, and I don't know if you want to talk about it, but no. you didn't seem to be very not happy. Not what I sent you, that's for sure. You, you didn't seem very happy. I was not. It was It was an exercise in, uh, and, and just so you know, it's a very small, small segment of the country, but if this is what goes on across the country, my God, we're in deep shit. Well, you know, you say we're. It, in... It's it, it. It was just you know. It was the 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 feeling that I got was that <clears throat> there's just a lot of very, very, very uninformed people of a certain party that don't <laughs> know what they're doing and don't know why they're at a polling place, but they just want to be there and do something and mm -hmm. do that and you know we had so many people because of the primary you can cross over you can switch your party just before you vote and all that that caused total chaos i mean people were coming in and accusing the you know the, the voting place of changing their party and everything else and i said well did you go get your new license and did they ask you if you wanted to register to vote and i said if you if they didn't say if you said no and assumed that you were going to remain in the same party you are. No, the DMV doesn't give a crap. They instantly put you into no party preference. So then you have to re-register to whoever you want. And, you know, the conspiracy theories came out on that. And the whole bit, it, it was... And half of the people didn't know. It was like they didn't know what really was going on they just wanted to be there to check one check one box mm -hmm. and then get the hell out mm -hmm. and then complain about it <laughs> well you know i mean to sit a there lot of that to sit there and yell that you're cheating or that you're trying to fix the election i mean you're you're it's as a poll worker going... you're pretty much voluntary i mean you're not in it for the money no you know no, it's uh, not, the money uh, is very small yeah uh, that's an insult to you you know, and I tried to put that across because you have to put on your smiley face and say, you know, yes, sir. I think you're, you know, you, you can think what you want. Not all, you're totally neutral. But people look at me straight in the face and I ask them if they want a paper ballot or a touchscreen ballot. And they look at me and go, well, I don't know. Where do you get the ballots that you print? I said, from the printer. Well, how do you know? Uh, because you're in a party and it'll print it out according to the party that you're in that you just checked in on. Mm -hmm. Well, which is safer? <laughs> and I'm going, well, I'll show you. This wire here on the touch screen, which is basically if you put your pencil in your hand and your finger and you touch the screen and then you push print, that's all it does. This wire here goes to the wall. This wire goes to the printer. And then you take the paper and you drop it in the box. So all the... All I, I'm not so sure I believe that. All the Which is safer? All the touchscreen version does. Is it's just sit, a processor. It's a processor to give you a printed copy for you to drop in the box. Yeah. It's so you don't have to take your pen and put it in the little bubble. Yeah. And everybody wants paper because they don't trust that thing. 
You mean they don't trust it? They get a paper and then ballot. They, they then look they don't at trust it. the printer that you go get the paper ballot from. And then they don't trust the pen that you're using to put the fucking bubbles in. It's just insane, and it hasn't gone away. Was that invisible ink you guys were using? No, no, no. no. It just disappeared. It no, it's, it's disappearing ink. It <laughs> yeah, it, it and then you gave Trump people. Uh, well, it jumps special, from one bubble to pen. the other bubble. When you put it in the box, all, it jumps all you're from one doing with the touchscreen is you're giving them an easier way of making out your ballot. You, yeah. e either way, with you know one candidate, it's no problem. It turns it into a QR code and drop it in the box, and then we stuck it through a machine when we get it back to the office. It's insane, absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 well, you know, they did a, a, some polling, exit polling, and the amount of people in California who felt, who were Republicans, who felt the last election was stolen was 67% of Republican voters. In California. In California. That's right. You would think that we were a red state when they come out. Yeah, I mean, they it, you really would. You, people have to remember, you know, the Republicans vote for Republicans and Democrats vote for Democrats in primaries, so it don't mean shit to a tree. It doesn't say right. what's going to happen when we finally get to the election in right. November. And a lot of the people last night thought they were voting for a president. They were, thought they were voting <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow was going to be, you know, Trump's finally going to be back. No, no, no. you got to realize this is a primary. Hello. Take a few months break and go think about it again. There's going to be a convention and there's going to be some tap yeah, dancing yeah, going wait. on. And there's... They don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They have yeah. no idea. They're uneducated yeah. and they're coming in and voting. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Uh, it's frustrating. Uh, Charlie has his hand up. Charlie? Of the country. Yeah. What I don't understand is why do people accept what Trump says? If he really thought the 2020 election was stolen, he's had four years to push for, for pro procedures that would make sure this would not be sold, stolen. But he hasn't said, he hasn't done one thing to try and change any procedures that we do in voting because there's nothing to change. We have the most secure voting system in the world. That, that's the fact, you know I mean? The fact, the thing is that we live on, <laughs> on, on lies. Um, a good example of a lie is, oh, well, I like Trump because the economy was better under Trump. No, it's better under Biden right now. Now, maybe when you go to the grocery store, hot dogs cost too much, but that's the fault of the people selling you the products and raising their prices and trying to keep it that way once they've had an excuse to raise their prices. But the fact is, and the president can't stop what, you know, what Hormel charges for a hot dog. Uh, but basically, uh, your stocks are better. If you've got a 401k, you're killing it right now, man. It's you like, know. Uh, and, but and so the economy, the lie is that the economy is worse. Then the other lie, crime is up. No, actually, crime has gone down since 2020, precipitously. So, you know, these are lies that people want to believe because they're being fed to them by Donald Trump. And I and I had this one gal come in. She that was the one I was telling you about that was questioning me on which, you know, she couldn't decide paper or plastic is what I call it. And uh, <clears throat> and and finally she was walking out and she says, I just don't trust the system. I said, then why are you here? You know, I'm thinking, you know, I said, look, I don't want to argue with you, but I invite you to come with me tonight at, you know, nine o'clock when we get done. You can stay here. We can watch us separate the ballots and put them into order and account for them on this sheet that looks like a tax form that we got to fucking fill out. Mm -hmm. And we got to, you know, add up line A to E and minus G and plus D and this many ballots for this and this and that. And it all has to match. And then we get back there. They got TVs and everything sitting there and they it's all on TV. I said, I invite you to come with us. We can go down there. You can watch the whole process. It's open to the public. They invite people down there all the time. You can go down there on a Wednesday afternoon if you want, and they'll give you a tour of everything. And she looks at me like, I'm not going to go down there. <laughs> I'm going, well, then what are you questioning what, what are you everything What questioning? For? Yeah. What, if you're going to sit here and criticize the system and not go and investigate what's going on, then shut your damn mouth. Well, you didn't say that. 
no, but <laughs> that was going through my head. Yeah. See, I couldn't be, uh, I couldn't do the job you do because I would last about five minutes. I was getting really close last night because we were in a confined space. I mean, we had we didn't have our regular voting center, and we're the one of the we are the busiest in the county, and they shrunk our place down to a forty foot trailer, <laughs> and it was no room at all and we got people going in and people going out and they're bumping into each other just to get to a you know a booth to vote and i'm going this is a shit show <laughs> so when we go have our but they didn't give you a gymnasium somewhere or something like well that? we usually have a big room big multi-purpose yeah. room at the church it's really nice you got plenty of rooms as a matter of fact well, the what, last what election, happened what happened oh I, it's because the election on. is fixed i understand yeah yeah it's yeah. the steal <laughs> Um, they could pick up the whole trailer and take it away somewhere, but no, um, they they had an event at the at the church that we were at, and so we couldn't get it for all four days. So they have to find another way to do it, and they didn't want to change the location, so they just rented one of those portable offices. And is this nice is this uh, Kevin? Is this in the city you live in? It's in the county I live in. Yeah, in the county you live in. Okay, yeah, yeah. and. Um, so they had to put us in a, a 40 foot trailer, which is basically a shipping container turned into an office. Yeah, I've seen that. This is just really interesting that, you know, we you, had get so that, almost, you, you get that almost much. Almost 400 flag. votes, almost 400 ballots okay. in a day. Yeah. And for a little county, that's pretty big. You know, it's busy mm. and they all come in at the same time and they all have problems. They all want to switch parties. You know, and you can tell that a lot of these people were dim and went to rep. And there was just this constant switching going on. And if they were a rep, you didn't touch it. No, you don't touch it. I'm not changing that thing. No, you put it, it's process me. But if uh, somebody came in and they, you could tell there was a trend where you could tell that people switched to Dem the last election because they wanted to change their vote from rep to Dem and decided to you know vote for Biden. But now they decided, I'm going to go back. I mean, it's obvious that's what was happening. Oh, boy. And this is such a small sample, you know. But if it's going on all over the country, I just went. Well, this is what's happening today, you know. It's, it's crazy. Uh, I There's a good article today in the New York Times that basically was titled. It basically, I can't remember what it was titled, but it was, you know. Oh, yeah. Is, is, uh, is America suffering mass amnesia? Basically, the, don't they remember how bad Trump was? Don't they remember all the bad things that Trump did and the way in which he acted and all of that? I spoke to a guy that I know who wrote for a paper locally around here, mm -hmm. and he writes books, and he's pretty darn religious. And he made a comment when I was out in the parking lot. Well, I guess we got to go with a sleeper or a criminal. I guess I'll just have to deal with a criminal, I guess. And then we walked away. <laughs> and I wanted to turn around and say, you know, let him grab the pussy too, father. <laughs> you know, it's like. And he's how, a, can, he how can you be religious, religious and even be for Trump? I mean, are you yeah. for rape? I, you know. You know, are you for uh, patting women on put their pussies? Are you yeah. for fucking porn stars? I mean, wh where is the Christianity? There's in, no morality. Yeah. I mean, where's the morality that you supposedly have as a Christian? And the, it you know, the doesn't make the, sense. The all. Baptists are voting for line. Trump. Ba the Baptists yeah. are voting for Trump. And I saw some religious thing he was at. And somebody introduced him by saying, and here is a great Christian, Donald Trump. I went, what? Are you kidding me? You know. It's it, it's insane. I mean, he wouldn't I even know. make a bad Jew, you know. Which I mean, tells me the things that we talked about four years ago. The the moles are coming out of the woods. They're coming back out. Well, I mean, somehow there's this mass amnesia that's gone on here. I mean, you would have thought after the last election, and you would have thought after January sixth, um, uh, you would have thought after a lot of these things that people just would have had it with Donald Trump. That he did wouldn't have a chance, and I, I would, you know, I did not. I, it's probably just because I was involved in it. But the, the, the strange feeling I walked away with is we got this guy again for another four years. Hopefully not, but you know, the big difference I think is going to be the independents. Obviously, um, whether they jump over and 
decide they're going to try the experiment again or whether, you know, we get some uh, some jumps from rep to dem. But I don't see that happening. I mean, there's has been a little bit of that, but I don't see that happening. Yeah. Well, what can Biden do to win this election? I guess it's get Gavin Newsom to run. <laughs> Something. I don't know. You know, I mean, well, I don't think it's a I don't think it's necessarily a route, okay? I don't think so. It either. ain't the election yet, you no. know. And, and again, like I said, it's a small sample, so I just, you know, I'm just Well, it, before, right now I'm before it was very out. easy to complain about Biden and I'm not going to vote for him again and blah 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 blah, but now the reality is here that it's either Trump or Biden and you're yeah. sitting there going, well, you know, and what they say the Biden camp has told Biden to do, and Biden is planning on doing it, is not going easy on Donald Trump this time, but really going after him for all the horrible things he's done and put him down and put him in a corner because they feel that if they do that, Trump will get rattled and start making lots of mistakes. Uh, and I tend to think that's not a bad strategy. Well, it's something he's going to have to do, whether he can do it smoothly or not, is the is the question. Well, whether he has the ability with his way of speaking, you know, I mean, Correct. today Trump uh, uh, um, said he wanted to have a debate with Biden right now. Want to have a debate with him? And I wondered if they had a debate, how whole, how well could Biden stand up in a debate with don't... with Trump? Think a debate well would be a good Trump idea. Stand up. Well, no, but here's the well. Here's the yeah, here's here's the problem. Okay, as he's gotten older, what people are thinking is a certain doddering quality to Biden isn't really a doddering quality. His his stutter has come back. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so it's a little harder for him to speak. So going into a debate. It, it, that kind of pressure can even bring out the stutter more, right. and then he would look right. bad in comparison, right? And those people don't take that into consideration. It's just the fact that he's an idiot. That's all. He can't even speak. That's all they'll run on. And well, they won't take into consideration that he had a stuttering problem when he's younger, and it's coming back. And and it's just like it, it'll it'll just be keyed in on that possible that well, point. Trump right is there. an easy guy to debate with if you don't care that the public cares about how you handle it. Yeah, you know, I think um, Hillary Clinton would be p finishing her latest term in office if she had just turned around when that son of a bitch was stalking her on stage yeah. and turned yeah. around and said she knew, she you, why did you stop smoke. that right now you're getting creepy yeah you know yeah. she would have won but she didn't do that she was trying to be the nice person and i'm not going to tell trump not to but she knew this guy was always following her around and lurking at her when she was trying feed to talk on that. Huh? certain people feed on that what you do is you don't let him get away with it you call him out for it Say stop doing that. That's rude, you know things like that. Well, the, 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 I think the, every stupid what I think every stupid wisecrack that that Trump has, all his backers just cheer more. Yep. Well, what do they want? A stupid president? A stupid yes, president? They, stupid. Uh, they do, Alex, yeah. stupid is as stupid does. Exactly. Well, who, who was I talking to about this today? I was talking to Lori about this when we weren't doing a a thing. And uh, because we, we sometimes do another half hour just talking to each other. And I, we were talking about the fact that er, these people are treating the election of a president, which is a very important function in our country, okay? Not that the president has all the power, but he certainly has his lion's share of the power. And if he's got the cr Congress as well, it's, it, he's pretty much ruling the roost. And so it's a very important thing. And yet they're treating it like it's a, uh, what do you call it, a, a reality show. Okay. You know? And uh, the contest. it's Who's another episode the of The thing? Apprentice. Yeah. You know? And it, it, I'm sorry, uh, if you want to have a real reality show and you want to have a reality president, then let's put the Kardashians up for president. You know? <laughs> they, certainly oh could beat, they certainly could beat Trump. They got better ratings. You know? Yeah. 
I mean, uh, I would know. believe me. Mm-hmm. I would vote for Kim Kardashian over Donald Trump. Right now. Yeah. 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 So. I don't know who I would vote over. I mean, who, who wouldn't you vote for? I'd vote for a rock over Donald Trump. Uh, I would. I'd vote for Taylor Swift over Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, if Taylor <laughs> Swift decided to run, she'd probably win. Right? <laughs> no, she probably would. Her fans aren't that old enough to, yeah, that's to right. vote. Not old enough. <laughs> lower it to 16, then they'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I I would uh, hell, I'd vote for Kim Kardashian. Why not? She's not stupid. You know, she's becoming slowly becoming a lawyer. I mean, uh, you know, I'd I'd vote for her if I if I was against Trump. You know, uh, it's just that uh, I just find that what's happening in America, this is the end of America as we know it. Okay, yeah. let's be very honest about this. And I can say it to all of you because none of you are going to be here by the time this place really collapses. All right? Um, may, except for maybe Tony. And then he'll live forever. Uh, um, I don't know. But, I mean, it's, it, I gotta it, it, this is the end of America as we know it. Because, and who, and who, is, who is actually taking this country down? It's Americans themselves. Yeah, you know, pretty much. And it's not going to be those those Mexicans and and Bolivians coming across the border, you know, <laughs> because they, they they're making you think that's a that's a, a what do you call it? a straw dog that whole issue, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, America America can take it can take a couple of million people into this country and not breathe heavy. All right, and we got enough jobs for them. We got enough low paying jobs. They'll take all those low paying jobs. That's it. You know. Uh, and uh, so that's not a problem, but it's being made like it's, oh, the fentanyl's coming across the border. Which is, which is funny because, you sense. know, if you see some of these interviews, you look at the interviews and they're, um, they're, uh, interviewing the farmer out on the, in the land in the middle of the country. And he's probably a Republican voting for Trump, but who's he got working out there in the fields? But also, what is was he, what issue is he worried about the most? Oh, the border is the most right. Exactly. That's and my, that's I'm my sorry, point. that isn't the biggest problem we got in this country. Yeah, but you know, you know, and he's hiring them. What what sense does that make? But yeah. I mean, that's what, what, that is the pushy and pussy and the preacher. <laughs> yeah. But what is the what is the most important topic on the American minds? Uh, it's actually the border. I think so too. Yeah. The, uh, polls, yeah. But it's the border because they've made it the border, and it yeah. isn't the most yeah. important problem that we have. It's a problem that we need to solve mm-hmm. uh, so that it's more uh, uh, people come into this country a little better and on yeah. better terms and so on and so forth. But it, it's not the biggest problem we have. No, Trump yeah. doesn't want us to solve it. He wants it to still be there so he can beat Joe yeah. Biden over the head with it. No, the biggest problem mm-hmm. we have are Americans themselves. Who are now voting yep. for like stupid idiots, for people who are stupid idiots, and that's what's going to take this country down worse than anything else, and uh, it's it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Um, so yeah, so I, I think stuff like homelessness and all this other stuff just keeps just it, it'll never get solved because there's there's no attention to it. Even at the mayoral level, they, they, you know, these mayors keep coming in here, say that's our number one thing. And then, and then nothing happens. And they say, oh, like London Breed said, oh, that's a, it's a tougher issue than I thought, you know, and it's like, okay, thanks. But you want to uh, 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 solve the border. There's, there's a termite in your room, a huge termite. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, she, a tiny dancer, huh? Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. not tiny anymore. What is that? You got wings now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh. Did you need something? I think you to say it. Put your gloves on. I heard you. What'd she say? <laughs> Wait a minute. What, what was that all? Brian acts like nothing ever happened. It's they're looking for a pink thingy to clean the ears. I have no idea. A pink thingy to clean the ears? Yeah, that's what they're looking for. What, yeah. what pink thingy to clean the ears? There's a. Oh my. It's a pig thingy. 
Yeah. Don't ask. You might not want to know the answer. <laughs> oh, so listen, I got to tell you something. Uh, and I hate to talk about health here, but far be it for me not to. Um, I, you know, I never got that, the information on my that blood test that I had about a year ago. Mm -hmm. That the guy took he took uh, five eighty four pounds of blood out of me and then wow, went and sent it off to the lab you know and so on and so forth but I never got a report on it I mean mm -hmm. he he never called me he called me two, they called me two months later and said he wants to have a follow up and I said you can he he can go take a dive somewhere because you know he didn't get back to me all right so finally I decided you know I got this meeting next week with a doctor about the leukemia thing what might be leukemia. And um, so I sent away for my blood, the whole blood test. And they sent me immediately by email for the complete what? blood test. Um, on page four, five of this is this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what's called a flow cytometry analysis. Cytometry, I guess it's what it's called. And it is uh, a, a, the primary test that you give to see if there's some kind of disease and where the, how the DNA is and so on and so forth. And it, it flashes it through light and does it through all kinds of things. And the diagnosis here, in big red letters, okay, okay says, diagnosis, uh, kappa monoclonal chronic lymphocytic leukemia or small lymphocytic lymphoma. Uh, CD38 negative, now see comments. Uh, the, it shows monoclonal B cells, co-expression, blah, 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 consistent with chronic lymphatic uh, 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 leukemia. The expression is minus 30%, which suggests a relatively favorable prognosis in CLL and SLL. He's had this for a year. Oh my God! What? What and do you? Have, what, and, if, and if it turns out that you have leukemia, mm -hmm. you could probably sue him for. Well, I was going to say you could. It, have it's it. funny. I got to tell you, it's just very funny. On the back page, this woman sat there for thirty minutes with me, asking me questions and answers and so on and so forth, and then she wrote up a summary of the whole thing, and she said, "I've." Ask the patient to return in approximately two weeks to discuss the laboratory findings. <laughs> a year later. <laughs> Wait a minute. She never Wait. told me that. She never told me that. And she, then she. CYA, cover your ass. Boy, then, wait a minute. Then she says, uh, um, wh where was it? I'm trying to find the actual thing she said. But uh, we've had uh, extensive discussion with the patient regarding the potential etiology, blah, 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 blah. And I've sent the laboratory studies over further evaluation. Additional smear will be reviewed. They didn't take a peripheral smear. I've asked the patient to return in approximately two weeks to discuss the laboratory findings and decide how best to proceed. This is the assistant, okay? The patient verbalized under understanding for presented data and agreed with my recommendations. She didn't give me any recommendations. <laughs> and, then, and then it says about me, her questions were answered. Yeah, those are th that's very similar to what they do on mine too, and yeah. I think those are uh, boilerplate little things. They well, her out. questions were answered. Am I a yeah. her? Yeah. And and it says patient medical. It to he. Yeah. Anyway, we spent sufficient time to discuss the many aspects of care. Questions were answered to the patient's satisfaction. No, they weren't. The diagnosis and care plan were discussed with the patient in detail. No, it wasn't. Never even called. attained pre patients medical records. Anyway, mm. I have a weird feeling that after I got that call after two months, and I told the assistant there that um, he was uh, uh, didn't never got back to me about my blood tests or anything. And I, that I wouldn't that, that I wouldn't see him. I didn't want to go to an, a follow up. What follow up to what? You know. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, rather than the doctor then calling me and saying, oh, gee, I'm sorry, it shouldn't be that way, but I'd like you to come in. We have some information here that we want to share with you. I didn't get a call, nothing, right? But I'll bet you somebody went back to him, told him what went on, and she wrote that extra amount of stuff into it 
about giving me two weeks notice. You know, come back in two weeks. What doctor, to begin with, am, am I wrong? But what doctor tells you to come back in two weeks? If they think you might, on Monday, they see you have leukemia, do they Good say, point. come and see us in two weeks? No, it's Yeah, coming. they'll do that. They will I mean, do that. Weeks maybe, but... Or, but they'll call you and tell you what the findings were. Well, sure, they'll yeah, at they least call you, you and tell you. My, my doctor called Especially you didn't. I remember, you didn't have an appointment or anything. But you were waiting for a call. I you were waiting for, for a call. call. Absolutely. And if she said to me, well, you know, I want you to come back in two weeks to discuss the the, the, the tests, uh, that's fine. As I'm walking out, somebody at the main desk should hand me a card and say, here's your appointment yeah, for two weeks from that's now. And she, when you talk to them on, and this is the same office that you went to and they, they pulled up this report and sent it to you? Uh, uh, no, the, this one was, they went onto their main computer. This was the company, which is out in Long Island somewhere. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. It's called, uh, in case you want to know, don't want to go to it, folks. It's called Cancer and Blood Specialist. Yeah. It's okay. a lab that, the, the, but those are, those are doctor's notes that were in the file. Yeah. But this, so this was you ought one to call them up on it. This is one doctor who figured out, you know, here's what I, I did the flow cytometry or whatever it's called. Right. And he has uh, leukemia. He has a small, you know, CLL, but it has a good prognosis. It has a, a relative yeah. prognosis. So uh, he figured he didn't have to call you. Relatively good prognosis. No, he. I didn't get any of this. Oh, that was a different. That's a different one. Okay. Oh, this you. is a different doctor. But okay. this he the, gave you all that. This is the okay. stuff that this doctor that I saw. Gotcha. Okay. At, I thought that was from the at, original at the, one. At this joint. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, I was very suspicious of this place when I first went in there because it looked gorgeous, okay? <laughs> and whenever you see a gorgeous doctor's office, you got to think to yourself, boy, they're spending a lot of money on furniture. How much is this costing them, and how are they making it? Yeah. You know? but Some corporate thing, yeah. But it was right there, fourth, third, fourth, fourth page, fifth page. He should have just called me and said, look, we got your report back. We think you may have a, 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 a curable form of leukemia. Uh, I'd like you to come in and see me, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna hand this to my doctor when I see him next week and say this is what came back. And, and that's the way it's gonna come back for your tests as well, you know? Um, but I just, you know, it just amazed me that they're saying they kept telling me to come back in two weeks. They never told me anything of the sort. In fact, the last thing the doctor said to me, the doctor himself said to me, who found one enlarged lymph node in my groin, and that was all he couldn't find any up here or whatever. Over here? Uh, he, the, he, uh, he, the last thing he said to me was, well, we should be getting the test back the first of next week, and I'll let you know how they turn out. Well, what's that supposed to mean? You know, nobody told me two weeks. You know. Uh, hey Tony, you pointed here. Your lymph nodes in your groin are in your yeah, but groin. No, but up here. Yeah. 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 I remember when I was uh they're up here too, though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I'm almost positive they yeah. did too. Yeah. yeah. He felt my, to my lymph nodes there. up there. There's lymph nodes here, there's lymph nodes yeah. in your armpits and, and then sometimes they get swollen. You know, I was gonna yeah. ask you, do you remember I remember getting sick as a kid? Where my mother it was behind my ear like it was swollen. Mm -hmm. I forgot what it was though. It's probably a lymph node. It was probably a lymph node because I remember I didn't go to school and it was swollen. Usually you'll have a flame lymph off. nodes if you got some kind, if you have some kind of infection, you'll get a lymph yeah, node. Yeah, I remember that. I remember being out of school like in fifth grade with that. It was like painful. I didn't did you ever go back to school? I did. I had but to. But the only <laughs> thing I'm worried about on, on Monday is the doctor's going to look and say, oh, yes, this uh, does look like you have leukemia. But you've got something else that's worse. You know, <laughs> yeah. Come on, you know what you should tell me. You know what I tell my doctor, Alex? Because right. everything looks great. I says, do me a favor. You want me to text you? In, no, I says, do me. I says, Doctor Richard. I says, if there's nothing that that I have to panic about, I have to start picking out a plot, which I'm gonna be very with my mother. I says, don't text me. I said, I did what you did to me. Remember when you called me yeah. that time? Don't text said, me. Yeah, you go I, like it's Anthony. Yeah, do me a favor. Yeah, unless it's important, don't call yeah. me. Here's here's the thing that that. It gets to me most of mm. of all is that you know uh, th this outfit uh, is just so slick. It's it's just I I don't know if I'd want I want to go to them. I mean I'm going to Mount Sinai, 
Yeah, yeah that's my, I, that's a good hospital. Alex. My brother I, works. Yeah, I have an, a doctor, a doctor there, uh, and hopefully it'd be a little more personal. That's a good hospital. In in you know, but it just bothers me that in this day and age, this is what medicine has come to. You know. I mean, if I'm a doctor and I see this page that says, hey, he's got leukemia, I would call him right up. And, and like my doctor got my information, my blood mm -hmm. information, and said, I'm going to send you off to this hematologist because of what it says here in mm -hmm. your yearly blood test. And he called me within a day or two after he got it. That's I think your maybe. GP, right? Huh? Your GP, Alex? Yeah, my GP. And he said, yeah, you know, don't worry about it. It's if you've got anything, you've got this CLL, and it's it's that, you can take care of it. Do you bruise it. easily, Alex? I was just no, curious. No, I don't. Okay. No, no. That's one of the signs that it's getting better. Yeah, I was going to say that's one of the uh, easy signs of it. Yeah, yeah but no, I don't have any of the symptoms. None of the symptoms. But you, but 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 bruising could be platelets and a lot of other things. So. No, bruising is not. But well, yeah, bruising can be platelets. You're right. I have okay. I've, I have really low platelets on this test. And the most mm. recently in my test from my doctor, my platelets were up over like about 120. Okay, they should be 150, but 120 is fine. 140 to 400, I think, is the standard. No, 120, yeah, 120 is fine. If they're 40, then you got a problem. Oh, if you're, it's under 50, you're in trouble. Oh, really? Well, yeah. because you don't bleed. Oh, I mean, I see what you're saying, yeah. You don't clot. Yes. You can bleed, but but the platelets clot your blood. So what was it, Shakespeare? You if you uh, if you uh, if you prick us, do we not bleed? No, we don't. We our platelets have problems. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. That's uh, a good one. Well, anyway, uh, I think we're boring, Charlie. But don't wake him up. Charlie's too healthy right now. Oh, <laughs> wake up. Yeah, but I mean, it's because, just it's wow. just that uh, who can you trust these days? You know, when I it know. comes to medicine and everything else. Oh, just... I know who you can trust. Who? Rand Paul. Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. He'll give me my medical. Oh, I heard you say in the beginning of the, beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was listening to it, and I have a feeling I know how Biden can lock this up. I really believe it. I'm not going to joke about it. He's got to get Newsom as his VP. He's got to get rid of no, Harris. No, no. The, uh, well, he, Harris would be good to get rid of too. That, that, I would yeah. put some there, Alex. Uh, and and I don't think she's terrible, but I just think that America has this attitude about her. You know. Yeah, I mean, really think if you get Newsom, it's a done deal. I think people were afraid that if he gets reelected, that and he dies in office, that Harris is going to become president. And people, yeah, and they can say what they want. That, uh, the that, American's not ready for a woman yeah, president. That's a very important consideration that, that you know, uh, over his, uh, above, above and beyond his age. Yeah. Mm. I think the other great question is, is she, would she be a great vice president? Would he, she be a great president if suddenly he became incapacitated? Yeah, Which is always possible. Trump. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Well, no, yeah. but the, that's easy to say, but I'm talking about the voter looking at the optics mm -hmm. of this and going, Hey, you know, I uh, this is this is the person who might very well have to take over, yep. and, and and at his age, it's every it's possible. I mean, I'm I'm Trump's eight, vice president may have to take over. Trump both, can't make a them, coherent yeah. statement now. It's yeah, but you can yeah. say you can say all you want to about Trump, but um, uh, it, it, we're talking about something that is is an optic, okay. And not a particularly good one. I mean, I quite frankly, be honest with you, I mm. think given four years, and we're talking about another four years, mm. uh, Biden isn't going to be as with it as he is now. You know, that's it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think by the end of the term, it's lucky if he isn't just talking to himself. You know, I mean, I look mean, at Ray. I, How I'm, bad is Ray? I'm Ray eighty-four, now? and I know what uh, the decline that you face at this point in time. <laughs> I know I look perky and all of that, but you know, inside it's it's a, it's a struggle to keep myself doing and, what I do. And can you yeah. imagine all the stress he has, Biden, being president? I mean, that that, that's a that's a very taxing job. Oh my God, I can only imagine. I mean, I mean, Obama went into it with dark hair and came out of it with gray the, hair. Yeah, uh, and, and most presidents do come out with gray hair after that. Now, granted, they're four years old, eight years older, so uh, it, it goes to show. But nevertheless, I mean, it, it's a very taxing job. Now, you know, Trump isn't that much younger. Trump is suffering from something else. Trump he doesn't is, look well. He, he's delusional. 
Is that what it is? You think he's just oh, he's delusional? Crazy? He's totally delusional. Maybe the whole money thing is getting to him now. He's getting oh, well, that can't be keeping him happy. Because you know, I think at the end of the month that he has to sell. He can profit. become president, try and get rid of all these charges against him. Maybe he will be successful at it. But the one thing he can't get rid of is the fact that he owes uh, half a million billion dollars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they're coming yeah. for it. And, and they're coming for everything he's got. Okay. Did you hear that? I think it was Trump is talking to Elon Musk. Oh, having, I hate Musk now, Alex. Did you hear that? He looks like a swarmy guy. A what? He's suing Microsoft now, Musk, and he's suing the other guy with AI. He's saying he helped create it. I don't know. I got. I don't know if that's true. It could be. He's pretty it, smart. It's possible. It could be. He's very smart. He's very I just smart. don't trust him at all. He's a real Trumper, I'll tell you that. I, no, I don't think he's a real Trumper. I think he doesn't care either way, you know. Um, I don't think Musk is smart at all. We, well, I'm, I, you're talking about smart. I'm talking about smart in that he 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 knows his way around science. Okay, well, that's uh, what I'm saying. He doesn't. Other people, he didn't put the spaceship up there. He hired pet engineers and scientists to do it. Be, he doesn't know shit about physics. Be that as it may, he, he knows a lot about he, business. He though. Knew, he knew who to hire. Okay, uh -huh. and he knew how to put that company together. And you got to admit that's a pretty successful operation. He ate him, but it is. You know, he he he, he got he got he got into the space business and made space a business, uh, and you can't deny that he didn't do that. You know, yeah. and and how about the electric automobile? All that that's done for America, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's going to be a failure, though. You think it's going to be a failure? a failure? You're going with hydrogen, right? Either that or something else. I I just think the electric <laughs> the electric is a band aid. I think the electric car is a band-aid between gas and whatever is next. You know, it could be nuclear power for all we know. Right. You know. Right. Uh, there will be nuclear cars. Huh? There will never be any nuclear cars. Really? Why? If you had plutonium or something in a car, every wreck would make a, a, a waste site. They're already fighting about that as with hydrogen. They're There's already... no way you're going to have a uranium car. Uh, or yeah, uh, but, but a hydrogen cool. hydrogen is a good idea for fuel. I like, I like nuclear. We got a lot of spent rods. Let's go ahead and use them to drive cars. Put them in use, there right? Yeah. My All rod. the Republicans can have them for their cars. Yeah, but you know how many people you knew had cars and they broke rods, you know. So you don't want to do that. But uh, you know, it, it it's uh, it's uh, it's coming ahead as uh, you know. Uh, all I'm saying is, is that he got into several areas that are, I think, interesting and have changed the landscape of America. I mean, I'm told if you're in California, you, you, tes Teslas are everywhere. They are. You know? You see them Especially around, around here where Kevin and I are on that. We what? see them all over the place. They're not out there? Oh, they, well, are. Yeah, they are. They are. You they don't are. find them in New York City because New York City, they're kind of impractical because of being, having to plug them in somewhere. Just a car is impractical in New York City. No, yeah, unless it's yeah. yellow. Yeah. Unless it's yellow. <laughs> I haven't owned a car for 15 years now. And the reason is why? You know, if I need to absolutely need to have a car, I'll rent one. You all have right? all that transportation, you know, transportation systems. I mean, well, you can use those easily. Today, then. today, our our governor, I know they're putting, our governor is that. putting the uh, the national guard on the subways because yeah. so many people are getting killed in the subway. The yeah. guy can hit with a pipe right by my stop on Grand Avenue. There's a guy who plays like I don't know. I think it's a was it a guitar and the subway. yeah did you see and that a, a, a person comes up to behind him and hits him over the head with something <laughs> like the maniac and around. Then, then he goes back to playing and somebody else comes up and hits him with something somebody's got to tell me you gotta get yeah. out but, of but she, she, the crime in the subway has gotten a little bad right now so we'll we'll do something about it and it'll take care yeah. of it <laughs> yeah uh, you just need more presence of people down there to Keep yeah, they need, the cops aren't down there enough to, to well, show. Well, you have to realize, I, if nobody's ever come to New York City, how difficult it is to keep crime out of the subways. I mean, you're going underground. The subway system is very extensive. There are how many subway stations? 
I mean, to patrol lot. all of those and to keep people there. You know what they're doing now, I found out today? They're, they're, not only do they have cameras now in every station, they're putting them on every train, in every, in every um, what do you call it, uh, car. It should. So that they can sit there and just see what's going on through the whole system. And if there's a problem, you know, once uh, one, uh, once the train stops somewhere, you don't let it go. And you have the cops there ready to gr greet it because some guy on the subway was beating up on somebody else. But uh, anyway, she... she Tucker it, says that's what they do in Russia. It's a, working great there. It works <laughs> great. Yeah. And look how beautiful those subways are. Look at how beautiful. No piss anywhere. Yeah, right. You know, look at all the artwork that they have there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't have any and basic... Bread. They, they don't have, have bread. They don't have no, any basic no freedoms, but they've got wonderful yeah, artwork exactly. in the they subway. Big, beautiful bread. <laughs> You don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I love their bread. The bread's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Look at that loaf. I thought Brian was going to come back. Yeah, what no. happened to Brian? Oh, well, yeah, he left. I don't know. It's something to do with his daughter and that left. His wife called him from downstairs. and uh, I'm sorry, his significant other called him. <laughs> it isn't his wife. Yeah. We keep making that mistake because he got yeah, a kid there married. and the whole thing, and we go, they're not married. Wow. Yeah. So. Anyway, uh, let me see. We've got about two minutes left here. Anything else we didn't uh, talk about today? Um, God, we're watching a great show on uh, Apple TV called Constellation. Well, I didn't see it. And Any good? it's about a woman who goes, she's on the space station, and then there's some problems with the space station. There's an explosive, explosion up there, and then she comes back by herself. And when she comes back, Something's just a little weird. Something's a little changed. Oh, really? And what you're beginning to find out as you watch it, it's a whole thing about, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, string theory? Uh, what are we talking about here? You know, the uh, fact that there are, the this is not just one of you in the universe. Oh, so it's another plane she's and on. And something Michael. happened once you went up, the, up, up over the, Car yeah, the Carmen line, is it universe. called? Yeah. The mm -hmm. Carmen line? That something goes on. That screws with you, oh, Gene, 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 and 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 it's just it's like a it's it's come slowly. I'm like in the sixth episode, and it's just starting to come together where you're. It's kind of piecing itself together, but it's really good. It's really good. It's called Constellation, <laughs> and um, then uh, also there's a, the show about uh, uh, who was the uh, who was the uh, uh, fashion designer. Um, um, it was Coco yeah, Chanel and the other guy who was, oh God, my mind's such a blank now. But it's not called Lauren or it, it, no, know. no. It's called the New Look, and it's really good. It's really good. So there's a lot of some good television out there this year, you know. Uh, now that the strike is over, anyway, yep. uh, let me see here. What are we going to do? And also, they say on the Big Bang Theory. Anybody here watch the Big Bang Theory? I, I still watch the reruns. Yeah. Like it. Uh, the last episode is going to have Sheldon and uh, his wife. What's oh, her name? Be on. I like the original uh, one. Yeah, uh, they're going to make an, an appearance in the, on the very last episode. So. He's from Jim Parsons. Yeah. I'm sorry, Big Bang Theory went off the air. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's off. Been off for a couple of years. I know, but well, they're, they're, bringing, they're bringing Sheldon and what's her name, Amy, yeah, that's uh, funny. back. Yeah. For one episode, I guess at the very end, there's probably some way to bring young Sheldon to a full. Oh, you're talking about young. Oh, you're talking about young oh, okay. Sheldon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big on young, yeah, on young Sheldon. Excuse me, I oh, didn't okay. say that. Well, excuse me. Damn it! <laughs> it's still Sheldon. Jeez, Almighty! Hey, listen, it's been a small crowd here, but we've had a nice time tonight, and I hope yeah. Brian's okay. Um, I hope everything's oh, yeah. okay at his house, but there seemed to be some like family stuff. Huh? You need to clear some wax out of there. Well, you know, as opposed to the rest of us here, <laughs> he has a, he has thing. a life, okay? Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, Charlie, for being here tonight. I always appreciate it, as, as do we, I appreciate you, Alan, especially when you send me some of that good coffee, which I don't overload on. <laughs> I didn't have a cup yet, then. Thank Bill you. Bill just sent Tony some triple X <laughs> Caffeinated coffee. Oh, great! Thank you, Phil. That's yeah, it's really, it was actually really good. 
called sabotage. Like, sabotage. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Tony. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, and then I will come to the cue. Cue my camera. There we go. Okay. There they go, folks. That's our gang of, uh, of fools for tonight. We'll be here again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. Uh, Amy is uh, next with the uh, intersection. She's back tonight, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Bye. Bye.